Fantastic. Okay, so as I was saying that, you know, to build the back end of things with Python, okay. So there are a couple of frameworks we use. We have uh, Flask, we have Django, we have uh, Fast API, but we're gonna be focusing on Django, okay? Um, Django is the most popular uh, framework for building back in with Python. Okay, so Flask is also like in the past where I've been, you know, working, you know, teaching people Flask. But now, right now, I want to you know, make a switch to Django and see how that goes. Okay, so because right now, say what we're trying to do is to give you a skill that you know you can really that can really change your life basically. Because these are skills that have changed my life, really. So, and so it's possible for anyone. All right. So once we you know, start Django, we're going to look at databases. I'm sure most of you have heard of databases, but we always talk about data. <laughs> well, it's different from what I'm talking about now. So we've heard of databases. So we're going to look at databases or we do SQL models and what to call migration. So we're going to learn how all those work. Okay. And then, okay, so I'm going back. So once we, you know, get our hands you know, on the, the back end and we are able to do some things on the back end, we can come back to the front end, okay? For the front end, we're going to use JavaScript, okay, which are those things you see on the page. For the back end, you don't really see, it doesn't, it may not really make sense, you know, for you, right? When you're looking at back end, because back end things don't really, you don't see them on the surface. Okay, you don't see them on the app, but they are really happening in the background. For instance, when you log in, when you say register, when you say register, you put in your email and password, you press register. Now, what happened to those data you put? Your data, your email and password is sent to the back end. And then the back end will analyze the data and then store it in the database. Okay, so the next time you log in, all right, the next time you log in, you put the same email and the, the uh, password and press login. Those data is again sent to the back end and then the back end will check it compare it with what you had before, what you have, what you submitted before. And if it's the same, it will allow you to log in. So if it's not, it will not give you, they will give you a message that uh, you cannot log in. Okay. So um, that's it for, yeah. So again, user interfaces, user interface just basically all those buttons, all those buttons. So we use JavaScript and HTML and CSS to create all those buttons you see on the page. Like on your WhatsApp, you have, uh, you test the you, you type a message and press send or press that thing that is like play button. So those are user interfaces. Okay. So we're going to learn how to build them. Okay. So if we're focusing on the this. Again, we also have testing. You no, know, because as engineers, when you build a system, you have to be you need to test the system so that when people start using the system, they will not uh the system will not start malfunctioning, okay, because of that, or you start having errors and all of that. Okay, so so do this efficiently. When you you're going to learn proper engineering thinking, because you're going to be building things and you have to be testing it. Okay, so this CI and CD, we're going to learn what it means. What basically means continuous integration and continuous development. Okay, but we're going to really learn how. So the continuous integration that when you make updates, okay, the thing you can just the update run smoothly. I'm sure you've seen you've seen your phone. There sometimes they say, okay, updates, updates. Do you want to update? Do you want to restart your phone, all of that. So this, this, those application goes through CI CD. Okay. And then again, scalability, which is a very scalability and uh, security. These are very, very key to any engineering system you build. Okay. So you want to build your system to be scalable so that, okay. Uh -huh. So if you have more people using the system, the system will not break. Okay. So it will not tell you that no network or the thing has broken down all of that. I'm sure you must have heard this sometimes too. Um, so or yeah. maybe thing has been hacked. Okay. So, but if you have you, you as an engineer, you need to put all this in, in mind when you're building the system from the beginning. You need to think about scalability. All right. You need to build a system so that there will be space. Just like when you build, you want to build a house. Okay. Now you and you don't put space for bed. So it's now when you after you now realize I want to buy a big bed. You want to put the bed, so you have to now break the room and expand the room <laughs> to put the bed. No, we don't do that in software development. So in engineering, not just software development, in good engineering, good parts of engineering, we don't do that. We have to think about, from the beginning, we think about scalability. We think about security, because when you build an application, right, or when you build an engineering system, people are going to try to attack your system. There's nothing you can do about that one. You don't have any control of that. So that's why you have to not think in terms of 
making building a system that is secure. So that's why when at the time you're going to see that when you write your own code, build an engineering system, when we look at it, we'll tell you that the way you're building, the way you're thinking about the system is not going to be secured in the future. Okay, so security is key to building software development. So we're going to learn all these things. These things we're saying here, yeah, things that you know it takes time to to really gain that like this one will take us at least two months just to see shaman says to really master to really get to the point where we can build a web page okay because we want to you know really learn all this and of course the git very very important so we'll learn how to do that python uh django on top of python and uh, databases javascript uh, user interfaces uh, testing and scalability okay so now, so any question on this before I go to what we have for uh, AI, which is basically, again, for those that are interested in data science, you don't, you don't, don't have to really be, um, you know, so to really master, you know, the topic of AI it takes time, not like any other skill, right? You know, so, but within 12 months, within 12 months, with what we can learn here, you can start applying for jobs like data analyst and even data science because you're going to get the skills that you need to be able to you know to be able to investigate the system to be able to take data process data and gain insights from data okay so those are the things we're going to be okay so of course of course artificial intelligence covers a whole lot of things Okay, I'm sure you must have had phones where, you know, uh, some of you have phones that you use your face to, you know, open your phone, like you just facial recognition, you know, you, most of you use, you can tell your phone to, you know, just make, just call out your pin and then your phone will open, you know, so all those things are part of AI and we're going to learn how, we're going to learn those ideas, how these things are possible. They're not magic. Okay, they're not magic. So by the time we go through this particular, then you're going to understand how you're able to your phone is able to process your speech and maybe, you know, be able to type something based on your speech or maybe able to recognize your face and then open, unlock your phone, okay? So those are the things. But again, there are a couple of topics. Okay, yeah, so question, please. Who has a question? Sam? No, good evening. Yes, please. Um, When you talk about... um. Um, web app and yes, front end. Um, I want to understand something. In, mm -hmm. um, though I didn't, I didn't join you from the start. Mm -hmm. Is it the same thing as the regular application? Okay, so I mentioned uh when we're looking at okay, let's let's think we have to just go back to where is that? Uh, I think when I mentioned um, okay, I think we'll go back to this to answer that question. So, okay, so here I've said front end and back end. Okay, so when you mean regular application from my own, where I don't know what you, what exactly do you mean regular application? You mean application on your phone or on your yeah, laptop? I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, like there are some files now you want to install on your phone for the extension. It means something like, um, um, for, for example, Apple is ISO, mm -hmm. um, Android is, um, was Android and then um, um Windows is exe. Mm. Okay. You install okay, so so yeah, so those are desktop applications, okay, native applications. So you have desktop application for uh Mac, you have desktop application for Windows, and you have for Linux as well. Um, yeah, so those are desktop applications. Now, now a desktop application has also back end and front end. Okay, again, like I said, front end is just the screen that is given to you, those buttons, those interfaces you interact with to make that possible. But there are some applications that don't even have those interfaces, those interfaces. You don't have any, but you can still interact with the application somehow, okay? But when you open your file explorer, for instance, that's an app. It's a, when you open Microsoft Word, that's an app. And then you're dealing with the front end. Now, the technologies with which we build web application, you know, they're slightly different from it can use the same technology. For instance, you can use JavaScript to build your mobile application, which you download on App, Apple Store or Play Store. You can use JavaScript to build desktop application, which you download to your laptop or your desktop. 
you can use JavaScript to build web application, which you just view on the browser. Okay, so these are different areas. So you sometimes you hear people say that this is a mobile developer, this is a web developer, and this is a desktop developer. Okay. So in fact, especially in the past, there, there was used to be very clear distinction between these two, three areas. Like you are a mobile developer, just focus on mobile. You are a front end, you go focus on front end. Yeah. But as time goes on, and, and that was because the technologies were distinct. You know, for instance, the technology we used to build Apple products, you know, at the point you cannot use anything. In fact, you cannot use even use a a um you cannot use any other laptop to build an iPhone app, you have to use MacBook in the past. You definitely have to use MacBook, okay? You cannot use anything. You cannot use any desktop. Any other. You have to use the products okay, and use your own technology. But over time, technology has evolved to the point that they are trying to always make things easier. You know, they came up with all these frameworks so that with one language, for instance, with JavaScript, like I said, you can build uh, a mobile app, a desktop app, or a web app. But in this course, what we're doing here, we're focusing on what mobile application. And that is because mobile application covers all of those concepts that you need to build mobile app, desktop app. Okay? So is that clear? Hello? Yeah, yeah sorry. It was on mute. Yeah, it's clear. I understand. Okay. okay. So Thank you. Ben, please. Crystal, please. Mm -hmm. Chris, can I ask a question? Oh, yes, yes, you can ask. This okay. is not a, this so, is not a unit where they don't ask questions. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm enjoying the class. So, um, it's, it's, it looks interesting. You know, these things used to look like they are really very complex things. But I think that you are giving us hope that it will be easy for us if we, if we focus on it and be mindful. So, um, I just want to ask you a question. When you said, um, you said you called something Python, and yeah. you then talked about framework. Um, you said um, Django, yeah. Yeah, Django. Yeah. So, yeah, my question is: Is it that Django is something is specific to Python, and other? I don't know if you said their um languages, do they have their own different frameworks, or do these frameworks work? Work. Do they work within all the languages? I don't know if you understand me. Yeah, 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 I understand. I yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I, I do understand. So now we have several programming languages. Now we have hundreds of programming languages. Okay, which anyone can do anything, right? But there are some that are good, are better at others at some things, and others are better at other things. Okay. For instance, if I want to build an application that will be used in a plane, you know, just to prevent it plane from falling from the sky, you know, to be sent, sent rocket to the moon and all of that, right? There are programming languages that are better because those programming languages are fast, okay? They can respond to things that read on uh, in real time, okay? Programming language like C++ or C, okay? It can be used to build what we call systems uh, software. So we have systems, but we are, we're not looking at system software, okay? Because we're not sending anybody to the moon or we're not sending, uh, we're not writing code for, you know, with something you can still learn, you know, if you if you want to, after you gain pro fundamentals of programming, right? Mm -hmm. But here we're looking at building application, end user applications. Okay, we're looking at building end user application that will be on your phone, or on your laptop, okay? So there are different languages. You have JavaScript, you have C Sharp, you have Python, you have, there are so many of them. And each of them, over time, they have built frameworks that would make it easier. They actually, framework make it easier to build web applications or to build all these apps. So if you are using the pure language, it's going to you'll be able to build the app, but it take you ages, all right? So the app that maybe you use, you'll be able to build with Django for like three, six months, like six months to one day. It, it might take you like twelve years to build with that Python. Okay. So if you have to go on the scratch and then start doing everything yourself. Okay, oh. so yeah, so the framework you build on top of this language to help you at focus on your business goal instead of talking to the hardware, talking to your phone because if the software you build on your phone, right, the app, they're actually talking to the hardware of the uh, they communicate with the hardware. Okay, so you don't want to the framework take as taking care of all of that so that you can concentrate on building the application that people will use. 
Okay, so okay. for Python in Django, and then it's not only Django as well. So for instance, the Python that is used to build with Netflix, right? They build this Netflix app, you watch Netflix, yeah. The pre framework is Flask, okay, which is what we okay. use to teach in this program. Yeah. Yeah, but the one in Instagram and Dropbox is Django. Dropbox is built with Django with Python as well, and Instagram. Okay, so um, we also have Node.js, which is JavaScript, which is called Express Framework. You know, we have Framework. And then we also have Microsoft.net for C Sharp. Okay, so other language, they all, all have framework. Mm -hmm. There's hardly any language that don't have any framework these days. Okay. Yeah. I got you. Okay, so. Can I ask um, two more questions? If you have time, if you don't have time, no problem. No, no, you can ask. You can ask. You need to clarify. Someone else is asking. Hello? Hello, okay. I thought someone was asking a question. So my second question, when you 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 showed a slide that you showed this yes, this slide. So you said this design on the left um was done with EXX or there's something. Oh, there's no, something no, no, else. no, 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 this this one was not done with CSS, but I, what I was trying to say is that when you see colors on your web page. Uh, okay. Yeah. When you see colors. Okay. See, okay. Yeah, okay. Colors okay. Are, guess, yeah. Created with CSS. Okay. CSS. And then also the positioning of the elements you see on the web page, they are not random, so they are properly positioned using CSS. So we're going to learn how to create a web page and put okay. button on the left, login button at the top, on the top right, or maybe something on the top left or wherever in the center. So it's CSS that makes that possible. So it's basically used to describe the position of the elements or to describe the appearance okay. of the page. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So any more questions before we are so when the when the people that design the page. Mm -hmm. Okay, someone is asking. I'm fine. Someone okay. should ask. So yeah. who's any question? Who's asking? Yes, yes. I have a little question. Okay. Uh, I want to like you gave you gave you given a lot of emphasis concerning the front end, mm. which means uh, kind of where users can have an interactive session with the system. Mm -hmm. So now, but I want to ask just a little question. I am uh, very much aware of uh, kind of uh, H, uh, human message interface, that is HMI. Okay. I will also look at it, both of them are the same thing. Okay, so um, the human machine interface, the HMI, all right, comes, you know, it's, it comes at different, um, I would say, at different stage in the, so like when you talk about web development, right, it, it there's a lot of things that need to be done to, you know, when you see this app, Facebook, uh, for instance, you see Facebook or WhatsApp, it's a, it has a green, green color. A lot of thought has been put into that color. It's not, it doesn't just appear like green. Imagine that you have a, we have a, an app that I just read. <laughs> Probably you may not use that app for, you know, more than once. Okay, so when it comes to human computer, it is a branch of you know computer science that has to do with how would humans respond to uh, machines. Okay, how humans respond to machines. So when you build an app, for instance, you want people to you know if, the way they are doing to you guys on Instagram. They can keep you in Instagram for like two hours or five hours before you realize you, you spend a lot of time scrolling out of that. Those things where you know we have psychologists, we have people who are AI, sorry, not AI, we have uh, UX researchers, okay? So we have people who are H who specialize in human computer interface. And their work is basically to make sure that human, we can build a system that human can interact with. With, uh, human can interact with, without a complaint, without, you know, if, you know, imagine you use an app and then after using the app, you are complaining of your eyes. Or you're complaining of your head, you have a having high headache after using the app. So the human computer is want to make sure that they want to make it smoothly. We want to make it create a smooth interaction between machines and human. That's just basically part of it. So if you are building an app, you, you definitely have to also apply that. So for instance, in choosing of your color or in putting a button, you don't put the button in, in the very small, like you can the size of the button should not be very small. So that people start looking for the button to press to log in. Okay, so they are all part of the human computer interaction. So we want to make that interaction to be very smooth, okay, and effortless, basically. 
So that's the part of fear. But you can, you know, there are people who have built app without really thinking much about that. But as the app grows, you know, you will not have to like start thinking, okay, well, how come people are not using this app? How come people log into this app, uh, register in this app, and after some time, they don't use it again? Okay, so you need to bring all those ideas. Okay, how can we make it, make, uh, remove all the obstacles that prevent people from using an app? How can we make it more, uh, how can we increase the user experience of the people that are using the application? So that's why you bring all this knowledge of my computer interaction, but it, it goes beyond, it goes beyond. In fact, in artificial intelligence, you have that a lot because artificial intelligence these days, you're beating uh, robots that have to interact with human beings, okay? So we we'll also think about, so it, it goes beyond just this app where you use all this uh, normal mobile app or web app. So it goes into artificial intelligence when you're building entities that have to interact with human beings, that have to live with, with human beings, that have to work with human beings. So you also take advantage of the knowledge that you gain in HA, the human computer interface, H, sorry, H, human, H, is it what is it? Human, Machine interface, oh yeah, oh yeah, human machine yes, interface. Take you take yeah, machine yeah. Machine. So you take advantage of all those things to build systems. That so when you when they are building a, an engineering system, a lot of a lot of skills are needed. Okay, so people who specialize in that, we have to, okay, how can we make this a a good experience for the user? Okay, so how do you inter just basically it's a general term for interacting human and machine interaction, basically. All right. So, any more question? Because we need to. Uh, I think we'll be running off soon. Uh, so, but then I just want to like just go through this slides on the uh, uh, AI, which is uh, of course a very very interesting area. So, yeah, very very interesting. So, like I mentioned earlier, so we have you know your phone recognizes your face and then unlock it by itself. You know, so these are some of the ideas that uh, that we're using AI. So one of the first things we're going to be looking at is search. Okay, so search is a very is one of the most important problems in AI. For instance, when you put your 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 phone, you want to go to somewhere navigate. Yeah, so the, the your Google Map will look for this will search for the shortest path. Imagine you have to do that yourself. Will search for the shortest path to your destination. Okay, so the search problem is one of the things that if you're an AI, you know, have to know how to, you know, approach search problems because it, it, the application is humongous, like it's a lot, it's huge when it comes to, right? So we're going to be looking at search, so we're going to be looking at knowledge representation. Okay, how does this system understand knowledge? For instance, when you use chat GPT now, you type in something, what is this? Chat GPT is going to give you a very, you know, intelligent, you know, very correct, up straight to the point response to your questions. So how is he able to understand knowledge, to represent knowledge? So we're going to also then see how that is possible. We are going to now see that all these things are not magic when you begin to learn, you know, understand knowledge and how computer represent knowledge. Okay. So again, uncertainty. Okay. Now there are a lot of probabilistic at uh, events in with uh, software or with computers, okay? So even chat GTP, it deals with a lot of uncertainty, but there are some calculations that are involved to reduce the uncertainty, which you cannot remove, okay? So there are certain facts that you cannot really, that even a computer is not really sure, but somehow, somehow, some things are done to you know, deal with uncertainties, okay? So I don't know, these are topics that are general topics in AI. So if you are saying that you want to know this AI, you have to know, understand search problem. You have to know the different ways of solving search problems. You know, because these are two ways that you can also develop your own applications. And then you have to know how to present knowledge so that you, because AI just basically you're building intelligence. So you don't have to like go very, very deep into AI. You can just go stop at the level of taking data and finding, analyzing data and getting some useful insight and even make predictions. Okay. For instance, now when you log into uh, maybe Amazon or Jumia or any of those websites, and then you maybe you, you just check out some products. After a while, you just see, you know, they, <laughs> they're going to be sending you ads on for those products. Or even sometimes you open the YouTube, once you watch a particular uh, video on YouTube, they start sending you more videos related to that. So those are things that AI 
thoughts. So they are all with the manner with AI. And then another thing you've learned in as AI developers basically is optimization. And optimization as engineers, we we is something that is very, very important. So it's not about just solving the problem. Oh, I've solved it, I've got the answer. No, no, no. But how best, how can we make it better? Okay. How can we improve on the solutions? So and one of the things about programming, and programming will not just it goes beyond the app you're building, even apply to your own life. Like you can not you become critical. You will not you will not just accept things the way they are. Oh, that, let's manage it. We don't because we don't manage in this industry. We don't manage. We have to do things well. Okay. We have to always think of how can we we think of the resources we use. So even after you're solving a problem, we're always thinking, okay, can I reduce, can I minimize the amount of resource that this problem is so is bringing? Okay. Uh, recently, I was learning about artificial intelligence and climate change. You know, sometimes we may not even know that all oh, these things can be related. You know, so optimization is very, very important. One of the very, very important topics when it comes to uh, again, and then one of the most popular I think that most people just know and actually is learning, machine learning. You know, your your email, for instance, knows. We receive emails from out from the outside, and then we'll be able to send some to the spam uh, box, and then some to the inbox. So how is it able to identify the ones that are spam, and then the ones that are you know, attribute messages, or attribute messages, or real messages? Okay, so it's learning. So also some of these are some of the techniques we will see. How also learn how it is done. Okay, how to implement them. Okay, and then also. Uh, which is this is one of the major break uh, breakthrough of AI now, what called neural networks. And to be fair, this neural network, the first time they started this neural network was in 1956, long time ago. Okay, way long time ago, but it's just it, about 10 years ago that the whole thing started making sense, started to make sense. And then you have this deep learning and all of that, you know, happening. But these things have been on, on, on the move for the, several years. Okay. So, but yeah, we're going to learn how neural network. So neural network basically is writing program that works like human brain, basically. Mm -hmm. It's just modeling human brain. How does human brain, the neurons in the brain for those that did biology. Okay, so yeah, it's just basically about that. And these are the things that make all these AI things possible. Again, language processing. So you tell your phone or you tell Siri, I uh, search for this website, Siri will search for the website. Okay, how is, how is it able to understand the language? Or you tell chat GPT to you know, uh, translate something from maybe from Russian to English or from German to Russian like that. You're able to translate something like that. So we're going to learn how to present you know, uh, language, how we're going to have to model language so that the computer understands languages. Okay. But yeah, but what I want to say as a final thing is that you don't have to, I'm just bringing two, two areas, right? Yeah. So you don't have to say that, oh, these two things have become very interesting. I want to do the two. No, 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 no. You can't do it to at this point. Okay. So you have to follow one. You can say that's okay. But everybody, all of us here, I believe that all of us here will go through the HTML and CSS because it's absolutely fundamental. Okay. So after going to HTML and CSS, you can then decide, okay. And of course we go to go through Python as well. And even maybe uh, the Python back end. But from the back Python back end, we cannot say okay, maybe let's stay with H with uh you cannot decide okay, you want to stay with web programming or you want to go into AI. Because it's at that point that you can really take the decision and say, okay, yeah, because after you've gained the fundamental of Python, so you can uh, you know, decide on the direction to go. You know, like me, for instance, I started, of course, I started with this, you know, I started with Python, even, even before HTML and CSS, you know, but then, you know, went to his uh, JavaScript and all of that, and now AI. So, yeah, but the background is still, you know, the most important thing is, you know, like I said, that. Uh, the most important thing here is your dedication. Usually when we start this program, a lot of people, you have, you know, people have motivation. They are like, very, very, but when it now starts to, when things now, when you have to really put the time out, because if you don't put time, if like, this 12 months, not because not just 12 months, I will say, oh, it's end of the year. It's not 12 months. No, no. It's the consistency, the time you put in, the effort you put in within this month. Otherwise, if you just allow the month to just, you know, go by 12 months, nothing is going to happen. Okay. So, it requires your attention, it requires your dedication. And of course, most of you obviously are doing a lot of things. Me too, I'm doing a lot of things, you know. But if you are able to put a sense of urgency, you know, what how me I always have great life. When I see that this thing is not working for me, I put a sense of urgency in it. I want it a change now. I'm wanting that change means I have to do the work that is needed to get the change, to see the change. All right. So any question? I think this is going off in about 10 minutes.
Uh, so that's it for today. Yeah, so any questions? So this is just to lay the foundation to tell you what the whole thing is about and to also like kind of like motivate you. And uh, yeah, and then on this, uh, I think in about- Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, good evening. Hello. My name is Ken. Okay, hello. Uh, actually, uh, I just joined the program now. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, how do you when you are saying solving problems, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken? And I want to ask, what kind of problem? Although I don't really know how to have, because somebody just invited me, and uh, with the look of this, I was having interest in it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I can have time, or if you can have time to brief me more. Okay, when you say what sort of problems? Yes. I, I, Okay, that you no. Know, so basically, when it comes to software, right? Software can solve any kind of problem, really. Uh, it, there, there's no limit to what software can do. All right, it, anything you can imagine, you can write it. Could I tell the computer could do it? As long as a computer can do those kind of things, and there are many things that a computer can do. Okay, for instance, now if you maybe you have uh you you have an idea, business idea, right? Let's say you have a business idea and say, oh, I want to build uh, a business around that idea. Well, I don't know. Maybe you can mention something. I don't know. Uh, because most of the apps app we are using these days, it's, because it's a problem that are being solved. Okay. Most of the app, for instance, I want to send email. So in the past, you have to write, even up to now, they still do it anyway, but right now it's very, very minimum. You have to write a letter and put in an envelope and send in a box. The problem has been solved. Okay, so they now have an app. You just send an email, open your app. Before 2009, there was no mobile app, really. Technically, there was no mobile before 2009. So all this thing came around 2008, 2009, okay, where you can now chat with your phone, make call with your phone, even video. In fact, when it even came, there was no video. Okay, I remember that time when Apple, okay, there was no video, there was no camera. So later on, put in put in the camera and all of that. Those are probably that are being solved. Those problems are being solved. Okay. So the thing that anything you imagine, I think that you see it as a problem, you can actually solve it with software. That's basically it. And again, also also a problem of let's say you are earning, you are not earning well, you're not making as much as you think that you should. Know. You can learn how to develop software, and that's the also you are solving the problem. Because if you have this skill, I can bet you if you have the skill, like I mentioned. And if you have this skill, um, I mean, you have the, a lot of opportunities waiting for you. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, Nick, Nikki, somebody has a question, please ask. Nikki, who is Nikki? You are raising your hand. Okay. So, ah, who's raising hand? Somebody's raising his hand, isn't it? Okay, please ask, ask. That's Nikki, isn't it? Please ask. Hello, who is Nikki? Please ask. Hello? Are you asking? All right, so. Nikki is not saying anything, so probably. Tony, sir, I am, I, I am sorry I came late in with Now, this appeal goes this way. Um, in of, this is a class so that at the end of the day, at our spare times, you can actually go through them, you understand? Those ones we did not get. Yeah, so that's why we're recording it. We recorded the thing, so probably we'll be able to share. Sure. Yeah, but the thing now is that one, one of the things we've noticed, right? One of the things we've noticed that people, you know, when you see that something like this is free, so I can bet you. Even like uh, go through it over and over again. All that you have been saying. Um, do I came in? Oh, no, I know. Yeah, no worries, no worries. I understand what you're saying. So, so I'll I'll make the video available. Okay, record that available. Okay, but another thing I want to also say here is that you know, we this goes based on the experience, right? When you're doing something for free, people don't value it. But I can bet you, I mean, this is the most important thing. Hear me, sir. Okay. So when you're doing something for free, people don't use to value it. And well, I don't know whether it's understandable, but 
is I don't know how what to say about that, but the thing is, I want to encourage anyone that is serious to really take this thing seriously. Yeah, if you take this thing seriously, you in a year time you're going to see change that you can never. If I know university will likely give you that kind of thing, yeah. But things have changed, really. Things have changed because a lot of things people don't know things that are going on, right? You know, because understanding the time is key. And like I said, now this thing is not just learning the skill. We're going to learn how to, you know, really know what is happening. We are going to be exposed to a lot of things. You know, really know what is happening. But if you don't know what is happening, you're living in the past. Like for instance, now they used to say that if you what you wanted to achieve in the year, let's say two thousand and six, is the same thing you want to achieve now. Then it means that you are you are living in the past. If I two thousand and six is far. If two thousand and ten. If you have not changed, if you have not adjusted your dream, you're not adjusted based on what has what's going on now. It's same, you are the same person today, and then you are living in the past. Okay. So um, this is going to go off in a bit, but I think I will just you can if you want, if you have any question, you need any clarification, you can join back. Otherwise, uh yeah, um, we we'll call it today. Yeah, but I will still give like maybe like 20 minutes for to log in 20 minutes. So if you have any, if you need any clarification. You need uh you have some more questions after it goes up, please you can join back. Okay. Okay, so Benjamin. Okay, um Fred, thanks so much. Can please confirm you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you very well. Yeah, sure. Okay, um, this is very nice and quite interesting. And um it has been one of my dreams. And then I think I've also started um a kind of uh, longing to see something like this and to acquire this kind of skill. But my question goes around, how is your the, the training schedule going to look like? Timing, days, and the rest, so that we can also, you know, adjust our, our activities to it. So I don't know if it is something you can discuss here or in the next time we will meet. Thank you. Okay, so so it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be on Thursdays. Okay, for now it's gonna be on Thursdays, uh, same time. So it's just gonna be one hour thirty minutes. Then of course you're gonna have uh, things to do after then. Okay, so it's gonna be yeah. But the thing is that you know, really it's happening once a week for now. Um, at the point is we can we're gonna add wow. Tuesday, uh, but for now just make it one because the thing is we want to be able to really learn and understand what we're doing and do the assignment.